It was a warm summer evening in the Indian jungle when Mother Wolf woke from an unusual noise. Curious, she left the cave and made a strange discovery. In front of a bush lay a little bundle with a crying baby in it. How helpless and sweet it is, thought Mother Wolf, and, using her mouth, pulled it into the cave. Suddenly, the feared tiger Shere Khan poked his head through the entrance of the cave. <laughs> Give me the man cub. I found it, so I am allowed to kill it. Humans do not belong in the jungle, he hissed. Because Shere Khan was too big to crawl into the cave, Mother Wolf gathered her courage. The man cub stays with us, she growled. Shere Khan drew back angrily with the words, I will be back. Mother Wolf called the baby, Mowgli. Over the course of time, Mowgli met the bear Baloo and the panther Bagheera. The three of them became best friends. We will teach you everything you need to know about the jungle, they promised Mowgli. <laughs> and they kept their word too. Baloo showed Mowgli how to swim and how to get honey from a tree. It wasn't all that difficult if you made friends with the bees. Baloo also knew the language of the animals and taught it to Mowgli. Bagheera taught Mowgli how to climb trees and how to sneak up on another animal without making a sound. He also explained to him who his friends and enemies are in the jungle. You should especially fear the monkeys. They lie and they have no laws, said Bagheera. Mowgli became curious. He just had to know if what Bagheera had said about the monkeys was true. That's why he climbed up into the treetops while Bagheera and Baloo were asleep. Suddenly, something pulled on his arms and legs, and he almost fell down. It was a horde of monkeys. Let me go! screamed Mowgli, but it was no use. The monkeys only giggled and hauled him to the monkey city, an old Indian city ruin. Bagheera woke to the sound of Mowgli screaming. Mowgli is in danger, he said in a panic. We have to save him. But how? Baloo and Bagheera could not take on the monkeys alone. I've got it, Baloo shrieked happily. We will set a swarm of bees onto the monkeys. Quickly, Baloo went to all the bees' nests that he knew. Come and help our friend Mowgli, he said to his bee friends. Together, they went on their way to the Monkey City. In the Monkey City, Mowgli was already surrounded by a wild bunch of monkeys. <laughs> Tell us how to make fire, man cub, they said to him. We have to know. It is the only weapon against the tiger Shere Khan. But Mowgli did not know how to make fire and was scared. The monkeys became angry. They screamed loudly and waved sticks around and moved in closer and closer to Mowgli. At this very moment, Bagheera, Baloo, and the bees entered the monkey city. Quickly, get the monkeys! Baloo called out to the bees. The huge swarm flew right at the monkeys with a loud buzzing noise. The bees stung them all over their bodies, making the monkeys scream loudly and run in different directions. Baloo's plan had worked. Mowgli was able to escape. Baloo and Bagheera were relieved that they had managed to save Mowgli. But they were also disappointed in him. You have not taken our warning about the monkeys seriously and needlessly put us all in danger. Bagheera said angrily. Maybe it would be better if you went back to the humans, Baloo added with his head bent low. Mowgli was very sad and ran away crying.
Mowgli walked through the jungle aimlessly for a long time. All of a sudden, black thunderclouds formed. It got so dark that he could not see where he was walking anymore. Suddenly, he heard a loud bang. Lightning had struck the tree right beside him. For a second, everything was bathed in light. Mowgli was frightened because Shere Khan stood directly in front of him, baring his teeth. The tiger had been following him unnoticed all along. Finally, I've got you, man cub. Shere Khan roared. Mowgli's knees started to shake. But then he remembered what the monkeys had said. Shere Khan is afraid of fire. Immediately, Mowgli had an idea. He quickly ran to the tree that had been struck by lightning. There was a fire now. Mowgli picked up a burning stick and bravely poked Shere Khan with it. He burnt his nose. Shere Khan howled in pain and ran away. Mowgli had been lucky. Baloo and Bagheera were right. The jungle is too dangerous for a human. He reflected sadly and made a decision. I have to live amongst humans. Mm. Mowgli said goodbye to his family and friends with a heavy heart. You will always mm. be my child, said Mother Wolf with tears in her eyes. You will come mm. and visit us once in a while. Won't you? asked Baloo and Bagheera. Of course! You will always be my family and my best friends. Then Mowgli went away. The Three Billy Goats Gruff Once there were three very hungry billy goats called Gruff. They lived on the side of a steep, steep hill. The billy goats Gruff had eaten all the green, green grass and needed to find some food. In the valley below, the billy goats Gruff could see the fresh, green grass. But to reach it, they had to cross over a bridge. And under that bridge lived a mean and hungry troll. I'm hungry, said the first billy goat gruff. And I'm going to eat that fresh green grass. And before the others could stop him, off he ran. Trip trap, trip trap, across the bridge he went, when a voice roared, Who's that trip trapping on my bridge? It's only me, said the youngest billy goat gruff, in a tiny trembling voice. Well, I'm mean and I'm hungry and I'm going to eat you up, growled the troll. Please don't eat me. I'm only little and thin. My brother is coming and he's much, much bigger than me, pleaded the youngest billy goat gruff. Well, yes, you are all skin and bones, agreed the troll. There's no meat on you. I'll wait for your bigger brother. So the first billy goat gruff crossed over the bridge and started to eat the fresh green grass. The second billy goat gruff said, If my little brother can cross the bridge, then so can I. Trip trap, trip trap, across the bridge he went. When a voice roared, Who's that trip trapping on my bridge? It's only me, said the middle billy goat gruff in a small scared voice. Well, I'm mean and I'm hungry and I'm going to eat you up, growled the troll. Please don't eat me. I'm only little and thin. My other brother is coming and he's much, much bigger than me, pleaded the middle billy goat gruff. That's true. You are all skin and bones, agreed the troll. 
There's not enough meat on you. I'll wait for your bigger brother. So the second Billy Goat Gruff crossed over the bridge and started to eat the fresh green grass. Now there were two Billy Goats in the fresh green meadow and one very hungry Billy Goat left behind. How could the third and oldest Billy Goat Gruff cross over the bridge? Well, thought the third Billy Goat Gruff, if the others can cross that bridge, then so can I. Trip trap, trip trap, across the bridge he went when a voice roared, Who's that trip trapping on my bridge? It's me, bellowed the oldest Billy Goat Gruff. And I'm big, and I'm strong, and I'm not scared of you, although he really was. Well, I'm mean, and I'm hungry, and I'm going to eat you up, growled the troll. That's what you think, said the oldest Billy Goat Gruff. You may be mean, and you may be hungry, but if you want to eat me, come and get me. The troll climbed onto the bridge and rushed towards the third Billy Goat Gruff. But the third Billy Goat Gruff was ready for him. He lowered his horns, he stamped his hooves, trip trap, trip trap, and charged towards the troll. The third Billy Goat Gruff buttered that mean and hungry troll with his big sharp horns. The troll went flying through the air and landed with a mighty splash in the cold, cold water. The deep, deep river carried the mean and hungry troll out to sea, and he was never seen again. Now the three billy goats gruff aren't hungry anymore. They can eat as much fresh green grass as they want, and they can trip trap across the bridge whenever they like. <laughs> <laughs>